Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where we are going to be doing a book haul, and I'm going to be showing you uh, some photos from my latest trip to the Broad, okay? The first thing, this book right here is the reason why I went to the broad in the first place again because I was there like three days ago but I wanted to get this book called failed it how to turn mistakes into ideas and other advice for successfully screwing up by Eric Kessels and um, the front of the book is on the back of the book and vice versa adorable am I right um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm reading it and it seems pretty standard fare. Um, I don't know what the hell I thought I was going to get. Um, but there's like a lot of images of bad photos that ended up being cool somehow. I don't really know. I haven't got that far in the book yet, but, um, yeah, it's French flaps. It's a beautiful book. Um, I think you could get this everywhere, even though I got it in the broad um but let's face it we all we've all failed maybe not on a grand scale but in some way shape or form we've screwed up true dat true dat your mistakes could change the world is the chapter i'm on and we will see how that goes so i will let you know how this book is then um when you first get into the broad and you go up to the third floor and you hang a right the first room you go into is going to be Lichtenstein Gallery. Um, and so I got this book because um, I just absolutely love his stuff. And this book has a bunch of his stuff in it. And there's a lot of, like it tells you about the stuff that he does. like. This isn't just a picture book, guys. There's a lot of stuff in it. So I'm very much looking forward to digging into all of this stuff and finding out about the different periods of his career and things of that nature. Because a lot of his stuff that looks like this apparently is in, like, Germany. So there's all sorts of just amazing... I mean, God, he's so fucking good. <sighs> Okay. So I'm going to show you some of the pictures of his stuff right now, actually. And I'll go through them and look at them with you. So this this piece is new to me, like as far as like new in the museum. I just don't understand why he does oil. But I don't know. So there you go. Oh, and I love this one. The um, things on the wall. so cool mirror i love the mirror like his black and white stuff is great too now this hat i can't remember what this is called if i could remember to put it on here i'll do it the hat like exploding that was so awesome those people in the back were like he was trying to get out of the picture and as soon as she knew someone was taking a picture she came out from behind it to like be in the picture it was really weird i'm i'm sorry i i'm sorry yep yep good stuff what does this say roy lichtenstein 1923 to 1997 is one of the founders of american pop art born in new york he was part of a generation that grew up during world war ii he studied at the art studies league and went on to attend and make art at ohio state university in the early 60s lichtenstein uh, began to use advertising and comic book images in his work, sources outside of art's usual subject matter. Over time, Lichtenstein's paintings came to symbolize art's collision with culture. From comic exaggerations of advertising to images of war, cartoon icons, and consumer goods, the printed matter of American culture inspired the artist's iconic works. Lichtenstein's paintings featured... Um, Bende dots, hatch marks, block color, blocked coloring, and other visual methods of printing. This use of printing and advertising conventions 
was central to his studio practice. Employing mechanized visual shorthand, Lichtenstein re-examined art history through the lens of contemporary life. Lichtenstein studied and experimented with many of the concerns, philosophies, and genres of art. Specifically, he explored how various art movements like Impressionism, Cubism, and Expressionism offered ways of viewing the world. Lichtenstein reproduces, exaggerates, puns, parodies, satirizes, and tests these moments in a body of work that has become essential to understanding post-war American art. So that is all about him. I love those. I probably showed you all of these while I was reading that. So that's probably, probably pretty good. He's so good. And like this one here, um, the imperfect painting, one of the things I absolutely love about this, and it doesn't show this in the book, but if you look at the top corner, I'll try to zoom in on it right here. One of the things that makes this painting so amazing is you have this giant painting, and this thing is absolutely massive, okay? It's huge. But in this top corner, it comes off the canvas, like just like maybe like six inches. It's so smart, it's so smart. Oh my God. Okay, so here we are in the Warhol room. Some stuff, because like people in my members stream already heard all about this. So um, Andy Warhol, everyone has their own America and they have the pieces of a fantasy America that they think is out there, but they can't see it. That was a quote from Andy Warhol. Um, let's see, he moved to New York in 49. Throughout the 50s, he worked as a commercial illustrator. By the early 60s, he began to develop his iconic pop style. As a leading figure of pop art, Warhol brought the imagery and techniques of mass commercialism into the visual arts. At the time, abstract expressionism was the dominant movement. Abstract expressionism touted universal appeal and unique brand of American freedom. Warhol's paintings of Coca-Cola bottles, Campbell soup cans, showed another side of America. His work highlighted the widespread recognition of these products through slick advertising. Warhol painted early works by hand, often tracing images from projection to appear as if mechanically produced. In 1962, he began to create silk screen prints, the medium he is best known for. While the artist's hand is not visible, as brush strokes in his photo silkscreen works, Warhol's artistic choices are integral to the process. He selected content, colors, cropped, and sometimes manipulated the source images. Through these choices, Warhol drew on themes of celebrity, death, disaster, and commodity. These themes are often read as metaphor for American culture. Warhol was skillfully ambiguous. His work is interpreted as both celebratory and critical. From his artwork to his studio, the factory, to his infamous persona, Warhol was deeply influential during his lifetime. His influences on younger generations of artists is still difficult to overstate. <sighs> Yep. So this is the Warhol book. I don't think this is the best cover they could have picked for a damn Warhol book, for crying out loud. But, you know, whatever. So many just amazing pieces, dude. So, let's see. You got your Mick Jaggers, um, all the different mouths, which you'll see in the video already the flowers i just i don't know i guess um that's that's cool stuff guys i guess but all the jackie stuff oh so good and then all of his um the 10 most wanted men thing the electric chair I love the colors. Like, the colors are just nuts. And then he did a lot of, um, like, newspaper things. Like, 
newspaper headlines. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, I like that. Then he did this. And all the different soup cans. But yeah, the Maryland's, those are the, just insane. stuff like that. So, yeah, so there's the Warhol book. I need to get to the Basquiat's so we could talk about the Basquiat book. Here are like my favorite um, like these two. Like that one and then that one over my shoulder there. These are my, my favorite of his. Um, they like bring me to tears a little bit. Okay this one's going to be a little harder to read. So Jean-Michael Basquiat was born in Brooklyn to Haitian and Puerto Rican parents in 1960. He left home as a teenager to live in Lower Manhattan. In the late 70s, he and fellow art artist um, Al Diaz became known for their graffiti, a series of cryptic statements seen around Manhattan, such as plain art with daddy's money and nine to five clone, tagged S-A-M-O. In 1980, after a group of artists from the punk and graffiti underground held the Times Square show, Basquiat's paintings began to attract attention from the art world. Many of Basquiat's works have been likened to improvisational and expansive compositions of jazz. Often themes accumulate through multiple references on a surface emerging as patterns out of um, gestural brushstroke symbols inventories, lists, and diagrams. Basquiat's work celebrates histories of black art, music, and poetry, as well as religious and everyday traditions of black life. At the same time, his paintings and drawings offer these references against the American and global backdrop of white supremacist legacy of slavery and colonialism. In his work, Basquiat integrate, integrated critique of an art world that both celebrated and tokenized him. He was keenly aware of the racism frequently embedded, embedded in his reception. Whether it took the form of positive or negative stereotypes, Basquiat saw his own status in his small circle of collectors, dealers, and writers as connected to the American history, rife with exclusion, invisibility, patronism, paternalism? I don't fucking know what that says. And he often uses his work to directly call out these injustices and hypocrisies. I'm not sure if the broad has the most of his stuff, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure it has an enormous amount compared to most places. So here we go. So this is the Basquiat book, and that's a cool picture of him on the back. Um, but yeah, this book is just, it's kind of epic. And I love these pictures of him in Warhol, like in the boxing outfit kind of thing. Like that just cracks me up. There's a poster in here of it, um, that they did for the show that they were doing. Um, but yeah, just like look at him working, dude. Like, oh my God, to be able to just like sit on your art to do it. My God, sign me up, dude. <sighs> I gotta make bigger pieces for show. But yeah, so his work is super unconventional. And um, I love that he realized... Which, I mean, of course he would, but, like, just how fucking stupid the whole thing was. That just the racism and tokenism of 
like people like ooh look at look at this see here's the thing that's awesome I want that hanging up that's cool as fuck but yeah so just goddamn It's just so chaotic, man. It's just wild. Anyway, so I'm stoked to read uh, all about this, and like I will, I will let you know as um, I, I will let you know how this goes. Um, and then I guess I'll show you the rest of the stuff I really liked at the broad um, and images. Because like I have a video of all of this stuff too. Um, from when I went the other day with my kid. And um, yeah, so I, I'll have another video of this stuff for you. Um, where I'm actually like moving through the museum but um here is all the other stuff the um ellen gallagher stuff that blew my mind um jeff coons <sighs> what else is in here that i was just like losing my mind over is um, Ellsworth Kelly yeah so there you go um, that's some of my favorite stuff at the broad um, and yeah so if you like any of this stuff let me know down below um, make sure you come to the fiction writing workshop that starts Monday because this is exactly the video you need to put out right before doing a fiction writing workshop um, so type hard, everybody. Paint like nobody's watching. And I will talk to you all later.